Hey guys, Sean here. I know I don't usually kick off my interviews like this, but I had a little bit of a story to tell you about this one. So uh, generally when we are at AEW shows, there's not a lot of media availability for one-on-one -on -one interviews, but this was a bit of a unique exception, so to speak. I'm leaving the AEW all-out media scrum, which went really, really long. We're talking like Brian Danielson, uh, Adam Cole, lots of big stuff happened on that show, if you remember. Uh, I streamed the scrum, I filmed the scrum, all that good stuff, and as soon as I walk back into the hotel, I see Joey Janela, who says, hey, me, you, interview, right now. Well, I'm not going to pass that up right there on the spot. In fact, it'd be flat out rude. So we filmed the interview. It's a good time, lots of good cameos, and then towards the end, my battery dies, like right as soon as we're cutting. However, when my battery died, it corrupted a lot of the footage. So I lost it for several months. I wasn't able to get it back. And then finally, I recovered it. Now, a lot of the stuff that we talked about isn't necessarily timely. And I thought that with GCW at the Hammerstein Ballroom coming up, and the fact that I'm dropping a Matt Cardona interview this week, and the fact that they're facing each other, it'd be a good time to give you guys a look at it. Now, uh, admittedly, not the most timely stuff in the world but man, a Joey Janela interview, good under any circumstances. Enjoy. What's up, you guys? Sean Ross at Fightful.com here with the bad boy, Joey Janela. Joey, how you doing? Doing pretty good. We're doing like a little unauthorized uh, interview right now. Did not ask for permission, but I really don't get asked anymore. So I'm just like, you know what? I like this guy. You know, I don't give him... I mainly... When I talk dirt with uh, with uh, website guys with the dirt sheets per se, it usually goes to Bixen's fan. Why? Why Bix? Because he's Bix baby. He is. I mean, he is. But I mean, you you did walk by me backstage in an AEW event one time. I was standing right next to Brandy Rhodes, and you screamed, "Sean Ross Sapp, I'm not giving you dirt anymore." Well, I've never really actually given you dirt no. ever. Actually, no. never. Which is why I found it funny, but. I mean, yeah. I mean, did, would you ever get any heat for anything like that? No, no. You signed a new de new deal this year, didn't you? Um, what no. Was that last year? you didn't? No. When's your deal up? In May. Okay, that's cool. That's a scoop. I might be uh, jumping ship to uh, GCW. Just kidding. No, oh no, my we're God. In talks right now, you know things here at AEW they're uh, pretty pretty good. They seem pretty so, good. So. Uh, I think uh, my working relationship with them is mm -hmm. pretty, pretty, pretty good, um, and uh, I think uh, we might we might get somewhere. Looks like some fun stuff on the horizon. You got you got oh, Sunny Kiss. Oh, hook. we got an, we got Hook unauthorized. We got Ethan Page unauthorized. Just show your face. Hook. We got Anthony Bowens over here. No, no, What's no, up? No, you, you have to duck down a little bit. Oh show man. Your face so I get the hits. Uh, yeah, I gotta get that traffic. I gotta get the Hook oh, traffic. Hook. Oh. Does this make us famous? Yeah, it critically acclaimed, Sean. Look, I mean, you saw the numbers my tweet about your, your promo did, right? That's right, yeah. See? Hook is a sex god. All the girls, <laughs> girls, guys, non-binary, I see it every day on Twitter. They're just fucking, they're, they're waking up with sticky, sticky underwear thinking about Hook in their dreams. There's no way I'm going to get pulled from the media list for this at all. No, no never. No, just st sticky underwear, that's, uh, that's on the uh, okay list. I mean, Hook does have an incredible following already. Like, it, it, it's magnificent. Absolutely. It's magnificent. Is he, is he a good wingman for you? Look, oh, we right. have Nyla back here. Look at this. Nyla? Oh, my gosh. They're, they're, they're all pulling jet. Usually, I'm See? the one to run in on your interviews. Yeah, you, you ran in on Killer Kelly yesterday. Killer Kelly? She tried to say that you didn't remember her, and you're like, uh, yeah, I do. We had pizza in this venue, this hotel, this country, this continent. Yeah, I had pizza with her. Pretty shitty pizza, but I had pizza with her, so. What do you think of the pizza in Chicago? Ever, ever, you know, they always say the tourists like deep dish. Actual Chicago people don't. But, like, what are you getting when you come to Chicago? I think, I think the deep dish is great. It's heavy. Yeah. If you're going to eat deep dish pizza, expect to... Not do anything for the, the rest of the day. Yeah. It's like a deep lasagna. Plus, I'm drinking beers, whatever alcohol, yeah, just on top of the deep dish. If I lived in Chicago, I'd probably be like, like, uh, probably 600 pounds. Man, that could be a good gimmick. 
Yes. So as we're filming this, a couple nights ago, we had uh, Sunny Kiss return, former partner, yes. turned on turned on Sunny, uh, brutal, but an incredible reaction for an angle that has primarily been on dark. So it's very clear people cared about you, care about Sunny Kiss. How's that making you feel knowing that this angle that you guys cultivated on dark and it was popular enough to the point to where they're like hey we got to show the dynamite audience this we got to show them what happened how did how did it feel to get that kind of reaction it's awesome because uh i've kind of orchestrated this whole thing to a t uh it's all me it's like uh all right just let us know where you want to go with this let us know the points and uh like when people say that you have creative freedom in AEW, it doesn't mean you could you have input it means yeah. you can write an entire storyline and just give it to them. And they say, yeah. It's got to feel good, right? It feels great because I think uh, one of my biggest aspects uh, uh, in my brain for the professional wrestling business is just uh, thinking and uh, being creative. So uh, it's just, uh, it's been great. The last, ever since I've come back from uh, injury in AEW, it's just been uh I'm motivated now, getting back in shape, um, and I'm just, uh, you know, I'm 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 just rolling with the punches, as they say, and uh, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, maybe actually get over for once. Oh my gosh! Speaking of getting over, GCW had a big weekend. That was that was a wild weekend. Wild weekend. This is like a this is years in the making. Uh, this weekend, so. Uh, it was. It felt good. I, I've I've killed myself, absolutely destroyed my body for those three letters GCW. I'm cut your Look at this guy, Luther. He cut my hair once. Luther. He has a lot of hair. You used to have such long. I did, hair. dude. He has the shiniest bald head right now I've ever oh, seen. Oh, he he's got like a Steve Wilkos fucking he shine does. on his bald. Did you know Steve Wilkos wrestled once? I know. I've heard. Wrestled him one time in Portland, <laughs> but it didn't work out. Really? Yeah. What what happened? Did, did he say that doesn't work for me, brother? When no, because we were the Portland wrestling was on the same channel as as uh, his show that he was yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. And they were supposed to set that up, but something happened. And I was a champion there, so I was supposed to wrestle, and that would have been super cool that's and awkward. Random fact. That's there the most random fact. That's. And I actually had hair then. He didn't. Oh my god. Yeah. Scary. Anyways, I'm gonna go. I just wanted to crash your party. I, I, I mean, I crash everyone that's, that's what party. I prefer. But like I was saying, we're uh, talking about GCW. Steve Wilkos, GCW. Yeah. Uh, I bet they could. I bet you, Brett. Could, you know what? That seems like something Mikey would do at Black Label Pro. It seems like he would book Steve Wilkos. Oh, Plus, Steve it, Wilkos had a spring break for sure. Yeah. Steve did. Wilkos and the Clusterfuck would be the greatest and Clusterfuck, uh, probably participant of all time. But it's just like. Uh, it felt real good. I, I put my body on the line for those three letters over the last four years, and just to hear uh, a GCW chant from yeah. like, I think it was probably about maybe eight thousand people. You know, they all came with it, and uh, it was wild. Wow. Uh, Brett was in the crowd tonight, and I mean, we made a text like, "Wow, man, something it's else." Feel good, man. Feels it's good. Feel Even Mox, like afterwards, I was like, "Dude, thank you for everything," and he. He was like, did you hear that chat? Did you hear the GCW <laughs> chat? And I was like, I heard it, man. That's really, uh, really something. And uh, I think we've uh, transcended uh, independent wrestling. I think we still are independent wrestling. Yeah. Our heart is independent wrestling. But I think uh, we're on a different tier now. And it's not a tier that any other promotion is on. We are on our own tier. And it's, uh, you know, some people... Like Game Changer Wrestling, some people hate it because uh, Deathmatch Wrestling, Hardcore Wrestling is our bread and butter. But, you know, we cater to all, all people, and uh, I feel like 2022, you know, I've been saying it for years. I don't know if I said in an interview with you. I said that uh, we're going to get a 10,000-seat arena or a big That'd arena. Awesome. I, sa I said in the next couple of years, I think, it, I think the time is coming, and... Uh, I just want to build a bridge between Tony and Brett, you know, uh, and... Uh, Seems like there's a little bit of one with Moxley popping up over there and stuff. <laughs> look at Sam. Oh, man. Sam, look at him with his arms crossed. There he is. It's the man that protects us. He just hit a shoulder block on somebody that tried to come over and... 
run or ruin the interview. If a deranged Jim Cornette fan hops the rail, this is the man to oh take him out and hopefully kill him. Oh my God. <laughs> um, <laughs> on, on that note, <laughs> but, uh, my, my battery's running low. Uh, oh, is it running low? We just, but yeah, uh, just GCW. I want to build a bridge between Tony and Brett. Like we have, obviously, the Nightmare Factory is mm -hmm. absolutely great training facility and they're just developing talent so fast uh like uh kayla who yep. uh is gonna be my heater slash uh valet which i'm not gonna call her valet to her face because she'll probably choke me to death no but uh but yeah they're just developing talent so fast and i want to be like that independent bridge when i see good independent talent i can just say tony listen yeah. Give this guy a chance. Give this guy a, a six-minute match on dark and, and let him shine up. So that's, that's hopefully what I'm trying to achieve. And uh, 2022 is looking pretty sweet right now. Bad boy Joey Janela. It's always a pleasure. Hopefully we get to do this a little bit more. Hopefully not unauthorized. Hopefully I don't get any heat over this. Let's do this before spring break. That's going to be the biggest spring break of all time. Uh, we had the biggest. We were supposed to have the biggest crowd before the pandemic. Uh, but then the pandemic ruined everything, so we did a couple kind of spring break-ish shows. Um, and uh, now we're getting there. We're going to get back to business. And uh, I'm telling you guys right now, that's going to be the biggest show, you know. And uh, just uh, stay tuned to see what I do here at AEW, you know. People are listening. People are listening here to my stupid ideas that I come up with <laughs> when, at 3 in the morning when I'm pissed drunk. Which have proven to be successful in, in multiple venues. With puke all over my t-shirt, but... You, um, one time you were cooking pasta at like 1 a.m. when I interviewed you. I was. I was. And I don't cook pasta often. I, I'm more of a takeout guy. I don't... But pasta's pretty easy to cook, and uh, I love it. I love pasta. I love pasta. I love pasta, too. Guys, until next time, we're out. Hey guys, thank you so much for checking out this interview brought to you for free by our friends at NordVPN. You can go to NordVPN.com right now and get 70% off plus an additional month free when you use the code Fightful or NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Avoid price discrimination, watch stuff in regions where maybe you weren't supposed to, uh, browse anonymously, all that plus their risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. This equates to around $3 a month, the price of a cup of coffee every single month to have that safety, to have that security, and to be able to have a little bit more fun with NordVPN and the code FIGHTFUL.